Hello beautiful souls, welcome to another episode. Today I wanted to touch on something that has been um, probably in my life for a little while now, <laughs> but also a beautiful conversation that got brought forward um, from one of my friends and followers. And she was talking about this concept of mum guilt. And if you are a mama or if you are a parent in general, you will know what I mean when I'm talking about the guilt that you feel when you put yourself first, when you actually start to ask for what you truly desire. So I'm going to be talking about this today in, um, in depth. And I just want you to start off by sinking into where in your life you feel guilty for actually asking for what you truly want. And so this might be, even if you're not a parent, this is relevant to everyone because we've been brought up in a society, we've been conditioned and collectively taught how to people please, how to put other people's needs before our own, how to make sure that everyone else is okay before we are. And there's this... Um, really common saying that you have to put your own oxygen mask on first before you can really put anyone else's oxygen mask on before you can really help others you need to fill your own cup first and then let the overflow fall into other people's cups but how many of us are actually living that and how many of us are just putting it on our whiteboard and telling ourselves that it would be a really good idea, but not actually implementing it. And the reason being that we find it so easy to, you know, maybe say to our best friend, oh, you need to really start to look after yourself and why don't you take yourself out and, you know, give yourself some self-care and some self-love and do things that light your soul up. And we say that to all these other people but then when it comes to actually taking the action ourselves we find it really hard the reason being is because it's it's not because you're a mum and it's not because you have a, a demanding partner or whatever it might be a demanding lifestyle where you have to take care of lots of different people it's not because of those things it's because your subconscious is has been conditioned to make sure everyone else is okay before you are. And this is where it becomes really, really important to understand that you need to break the cycle. You need to actually stop doing this so that your kids or the people around you that you have, um, you know, you have influence over, if you don't stop this, if you don't break the cycle, you're going to continue this collective conditioning. And so the people that come after you are just going to fall into the same patterns and the same habits that you have created in your life. And so we can see that with, you know, our mums, our mums that didn't put their selves first. Um, and I know the generation before even before my mum, so my grandma, there was a lot of um, that that sort of collective way of being in society where the men would go out and work and the women would stay home. And that was still around when my mum brought up us kids. And so there's this, this role that mothers fall into in just taking care of the household taking care, making sure dinner's cooked when your partner comes home from work, making sure, you know, all the household chores are done so that your partner doesn't have to do them because they've gone out and they've worked really hard. So you're going to make sure their life is easy when they get home. And at the same time, you're working, you know, the equivalent of two full-time jobs to take care of your children. And where, who's taking care of you? If you're not taking care of yourself, who is taking care of you? And the answer, generally speaking, is no one. So that's where we see mums completely lose their identity, completely lose their sense of self and reach burnout, like chronic burnout 
whether it's from the sleep deprivation, whether it's from, you know, just making meals for X amount of people three times a day, whether it's from school pickups and drop offs and, you know, all of running around the countryside for your family, all of these things um, being really important. But where is the time that you actually say, I'm going to take this time for myself? Where is that time? And again, just to reinforce what I just briefly spoke into, if you're not making that time for yourself, you're becoming a worse mum. You're becoming a worse version of yourself. And this sounds really harsh because it is, but it's a harsh truth that you need to face. And sometimes when you face that harsh truth, it gives you the impetus to actually make change happen. So I would encourage you to look at in your life at all of the ways in which you self-abandon. So look at when you really want to do something and you're like, oh, that would be so nice if I could just have a shower by myself tonight. Or if I could just spend extra time in the shower washing my hair. Or if I could just go to the toilet in peace. Or I could just eat in peace. Or I could eat it all. Like all of these things that mum sacrifice. These basic human rights that we have. That we sacrifice for our family, for our kids. And so if you're constantly sacrificing and you're never actually putting yourself first and saying, no, I'm going to take five minutes, I'm going to take three hours, whatever I need to actually come back to who I truly am. If you're not spending the time doing that, you're becoming a lesser version of you. You are literally settling for less. You're becoming more frustrated and resentful. You're becoming more unloving towards yourself and therefore others around you as well because anything that we're doing externally internally sorry anything that we're doing internally has an external effect we are the cause of our own reality we are the cause of the effect of our own reality so when you're not showing up for yourself and you're becoming a lesser version of who you know you truly can be when you are on fire, when you are firing on all cylinders and there's there's joy, there's an abundance of fulfillment and happiness and joy and energy and love in your own self. You know that that ri- has a ripple effect around you. You've seen the difference between when you show up happy and exhilarated and excited for life Versus when you show up in this space of like, oh my God, how am I going to get through another day doing the same things that I did yesterday, taking care of the same stuff that I have for the last however many years? How am I actually going to keep showing up? So knowing this, knowing that you're a lesser version of yourself, allow that to actually land in your body. And feel where it's present within you. Feel that sensation of, oh my God, I actually, this is, there's truth in this. I am, I'm not showing up for myself. And it's making me a shitter person. It's making me be a worse version of myself. And if it's not enough, to know that that's a detriment to your soul, then maybe it's enough to know that it's a detriment to every single person that is around you and their soul too. So your kids, your partners, your family, your friends, they're all experiencing a lesser version of you. And as a result of that, you're buying into and playing into the collective conditioning of making sure everyone else is happy before you are. And if everyone's doing this, then no one's truly happy in themselves. No one's truly fulfilled in themselves. And it's huge. 
It's massive. It's everywhere. It's not just in mums and dads. It's in everyone. Like I said, this is a collective limitation. It's a collective wound. It's a collective piece of conditioning that we've all inherited to people, please. So that's what mum guilt really is. It's this this feeling of um, not being worthy enough to ask for what you truly want. And I know that there's so many of you that are listening that go, yeah, but I do ask for what I want and I do take time for myself. I have these times where I block out, you know, time to work out or I, I, I block out time to get up in the morning before everyone else does and do my own thing. But just notice when you actually ask for that time, how does that feel within your body? Do you feel nervous about asking for that time? To your partner or to your kids or to your family, your parents, whoever it is? Or do you feel like you don't even have to ask? This is just a, a regular thing that you do. It's a standard that you set for yourself first and foremost. And if there's a change that you have to make and that standard isn't set yet, the thought of putting this into action, how does that feel in your body? Does it feel like there's a bit of nervousness around it to actually start to do this? To jump in and be like, okay, I'm actually going to start to put myself first. Like, how does it feel within you? So that fear of putting yourself first and that along with that comes the lack of self-worth, lack of valuing yourself. Um, that's what needs to be rearranged. So it's all well and good to, to know this information that I've just shared. Um, but the next step is to actually be able to embody this information and in order to do that you need to clear out the subconscious wounds that sit below it so I'm not worthy I'm not valued everyone else needs to go before me people pleasing and the people pleasing part um just to add to that is um sorry just readjusting uh the reason why we people please is because we think that's what we need to do in order to feel loved and in order to feel accepted, whether it's in our household or whether it's in, you know, the broader society. So, it, but it's, it's a really warped perception of love. It's not true love because true love is unconditional True love, when it hits your heart, is undeniable. There's no questions. It's never going away. It's there to stay. It's like this, it's this depth, depth of love that is unsurpassed. And that is not people pleasing. That is not making sure everyone else is happy before you are. So then they give you praise and they give you compassion and they give you a hug that's not true love that's basically saying I will love you if you do these things for me and if you don't do these things for me then I won't love you as much I won't give you as much of my love so that's not true love that's very conditional love but a lot of society believes that we have to people please in order to feel that type of love that type of connection that's like oh you're so good to me I love you so much thank you for doing all of these things for me and although there is a space for you to still be really giving in a bond of unconditional love there is absolutely space for that but my point here is that you don't need to sacrifice your own self and abandon your own self in order for you to be able to feel loved by others. That should not be happening at all. 
So the wound that needs to be addressed is needing love from others in order to feel loved in general. And this comes back to learning how to love yourself first and foremost, which we've gone full circle. That takes us right back to the beginning. And in order to love yourself first, that means putting yourself first, saying yes to what you truly desire, loving every single inch of your body, every single inch of your soul. So I'm going to talk about some ways that you can start to put yourself first. But I want to address um, the other few things that I just touched on around fear and a lack of valuing yourself. So the fear is off the back of the people pleasing. When, When you don't show up for others, you have a fear that you're going to be... um, outcasted you have a fear that they're not going to love you anymore and so this is a fear of abandonment that really runs through so many of us again it's it's a bit of a collective wound in society that you know if we don't show up for others we're going to be abandoned we're not going to be loved so that's the fear around um putting others sorry not putting others first there is that fear The other fear that we have is the fear of unfamiliarity, the fear of uncertainty, like what happens next? What actually happens when I start to put myself first? We have to remember that the subconscious doesn't just exist as a subconscious mind, but we also have our subconscious body. And what what I um, want to presence here is that when you're not kind of filling the um, subconscious body with familiar feelings or emotions, the subconscious body is then going to be looking for those in your environment. It's going gonna, it's gonna to feel like a sense of a withdrawal symptoms from, from your stress and your anxiety and all of these things that you've carried for such a long time. When you start to release those feelings and if they're not there anymore, your subconscious body is going to be like, hang on a minute, this doesn't feel like a normal day in the life of me. It feels different. I've started to put myself first. I'm getting outside and I'm going for a walk in nature. This actually feels really unfamiliar, right? So there's the fear of it not being normal in your perception of what normal is. And most of the time, just having awareness of that is enough to be able to rearrange it. There's not much more emotional work that you probably have to do in within that. But just knowing when you start to feel the sensations of like, this feels really weird. This doesn't feel normal. I'm not sure what this actually is, this new feeling of putting myself first. The having awareness around that and um, really catching yourself when it feels weird is usually enough to just then allow that feeling of weirdness to wash through your body and carry on doing what you're doing because you're doing life like this is actually living. Allow that to land. Getting out there and doing the things that you truly love for you first that's life that is living that's coming alive that's experiencing all that life has to offer you that's not settling for less which is what the most of the majority of society chooses so then we can move into the self-value piece that I want to presence and what's really important to understand here in In the same token of the subconscious, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, where I just mentioned that the subconscious is really used to a certain way of being and that might be your people-pleasing mentality or your mum guilt or your stress and your anxiety around being so busy every single day and just being on high alert 24-7, your nervous system is on fire. When you remove that, 
there's the fear, there's like this unfamiliarity, but also when you remove it and then you start to put yourself first, all of a sudden you're starting to teach your subconscious that you actually value yourself. So we've removed the the wounding of fear of not being loved, fear of abandonment. We've we've peeled that back. And now we've exposed our soul and our subconscious to a new learning. So where it once thought, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not valued, I don't value myself enough, I don't value myself above others, especially not my kids, right? When we can actually put ourselves first, we're starting to teach our subconscious, I do, hey, I got your back. I actually love you. I value you. You are worthy of this time to yourself, doing whatever the heck you want to do. You are actually worthy of that. And mamas, if you're listening, just sink into how many times you've given up a meal for your kids. How many times you've, you know, not given yourself basic human rights and human needs because you've put your kids first. And I get it. If it is for their survival, it's absolutely necessary. But a lot of the times we get into these patterns where we're putting them first in ways that are absolutely unnecessary. And again, we're putting them first so much so that we're burning ourselves out. And that's not good for anyone. It's not just you that is suffering when that happens. It's everyone in your proximity. And because ripple effects are actually limitless, they never stop. It actually affects the whole world. It affects the whole collective, every single decision that you make, which is really awesome and impactful because when you start to love yourself and value yourself, that creates a ripple effect that touches every single soul on the planet. That's the power that you have in choosing yourself. But first and foremost, first and foremost, you must do it for you. I know that there is a part of you that really, really craves your true soul to come alive, your true self to be able to be fully expressed into this world. I know that there's a part of you that wants that so deeply, but you just haven't figured out yet how to start saying yes to yourself. This is your permission piece to start to do that now. Start with something small. Start with something really tiny, like a a warm cup of tea or coffee or cacao or whatever it is in the morning. And when things come into your sphere of life that knock you off that perch and they go, oh, mum, you wanted a warm cup of coffee in the morning. Actually, I'm going to have a tantrum or I'm going to you know, put things in your law of attraction that are going to absolutely sideswipe you and tell you you can't have that. Just notice that you're being challenged. You're being tested in this. The universe is reaching out to you and testing you to ask you how much do you actually want to make change happen. So when those things come your way, it's not about going back into self-pity and self-loathing and giving up on yourself again. It's about setting that task down for 10 minutes, for however long it needs to be set down, attending to the issue at hand, feeling all of your emotions around the issue at hand, and then still choosing yourself. Or better yet, if you can, (laughs) if you can do this part, Better yet, even when the tantrums are being thrown and even when something pops into your circumstance or your situation that throws you off guard, it throws you off kilter, it sideswipes you. 
if in that moment it's possible to keep choosing yourself and to do the thing anyway, absolutely do it. And I'm going to give a personal example. Last night, I really desired to go for a run because I'd been inside all day and, you know, it it had been bad weather and there was a break in the rain and I was like, you know what, I really want to get outside and go for a run. I'd moved through some of my own emotional processes and I just felt like I needed to move my body to really embody the upgrades that I'd just experienced. And um, my partner was cooking dinner and Phoenix is quite um, attention seeking when dinner is being cooked. (laughs) So what I said was, I'm going to go for a run and I'll take Phoenix with me in the pram. And it's not uncommon that I run with the pram, even though it's really hard work, I still get it done. Um, But actually, in truth, I desired to run by myself, but I compromised that desire and I said look I'll run with the pram just to you know give my partner a break and allow him to cook dinner in peace and what happened was the pram has this setting where you can lock out the front wheel so it doesn't get wobbly when you run and that setting wasn't working so the pram was was just wobbling everywhere I literally could not run with it so I I had a little tantrum. I turned around and I went home. I put the pram away and I said, I'm not going for a run. Stuff it. Like this, I I give up on myself. And what happened in that moment was I just got really angry and I got really frustrated and I felt really icky and I felt like I couldn't give Phoenix any of my attention and my time. I couldn't give my partner any love and connection. And I was just being irritated and so I asked him I just said when is dinner going to be ready like when are we coming back to have our family dinner together and he said I'll be ready in about 10 15 minutes I said beautiful I'm going to go for a run for 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back I'll see you soon and I just declared it I didn't ask him if that was okay I just said I really need this and of course he said yeah go fast, like go and get it done. He's so supportive. But had I not asked, the rest of the night would have been me sitting in that frustration that I didn't give myself what I knew my body and my mind and my soul needed. And instead I self-abandoned and I gave up on myself. So going for that 10, 15 minute run completely rearranged my mood and my internal state of being I came back I was happy I was refreshed I felt like I had that hit of endorphins I felt like I'd run into more of my fullest self it was just what I needed and I went and I did it even though there were things that were thrown in my way so this is the power of being able to choose yourself you know, and as a result, we had a really beautiful dinner all together. Phoenix went to bed not long after and we had a really nice night, my partner and I, because it was our weekend together. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, even just reflecting on that, there's a sense of pride that comes online within me for, you know, 12 months ago, I wouldn't have chose myself maybe even six months ago I wouldn't have chose myself but in this choosing of myself I know that I'm creating and pathing a paving a pathway not pathing a paveway (laughs) paving a pathway for so many other mums and and dads and friends and families and children you know first and foremost my baby boy to follow in these footsteps of leaning into your own greatness knowing yourself fully before you let anyone else dictate who you be before you take care of everyone else and make them happy at the sacrifice of your own soul 
this is probably one of the most important pieces that I teach in my work is how to start saying yes to the truth of your soul and start saying no to anything that doesn't feel like that truth. Because if it's not loving for you, it's not loving for anybody. So feel that part of you that truly, truly desires to meet all of you. Feel that part of you that truly desires for your fullest self to be expressed. And just notice the little pieces and the little times or the big times and the big pieces of your life where you're choosing to sacrifice your true self and self-abandon. And there's going to be a gap between who you are being now and who you truly want to be. And the work exists in between that gap. And that work is what I facilitate and there's a, you know, there's a small bunch of coaches that facilitate the same work of, as me. Um, and it is, it's, it's the emotional work. It's clearing out those limitations within you, like, like the fear of not being loved, like the fear of abandonment, like the self-value piece that I've mentioned. And there's so many more. These are the collective um, wounds that I've really highlighted in this podcast because I'm not speaking to one individual. But when it is just one individual, we get to uncover so many nuances that are specific to that person. And we get to deep dive into healing those wounds, clearing out those limitations so that it becomes easier and easier and easier to say yes to the truth of who you are. And that is, that is life. That is liberating. That is freedom. And these are things that we all chase, whether we know it or not. We are all actually on the pathway to free the truth of us, to allow our true selves to come alive so that we don't have to be living in this lesser version of who we truly are. That's what creates real fulfillment. Yeah, not the not the fake stuff that we get from materials and um, success on the in the external reality, but real deep fulfillment comes online within your soul when you actually start to liberate yourselves and express who you truly are to the world around you in every single moment. It's the best feeling, (laughs) the best feeling. So my loves, if you have any queries and curiosities about what I've shared today, please be in touch. You can find me on Instagram, it's just my my name, Shannon Molseed. Also on Facebook, also on TikTok, also on YouTube. And you can also find my website, www.shannonmolseed.com, where there's more information about me if you're curious. And please ask any questions that you have. Please share this if you feel like someone that you love needs to hear it. And please give some feedback if there's any points that you would love me to touch further into. I love you all. Um, You being in this space is what actually allows me to keep doing this work. So I just appreciate each and every one of you so, so deeply. And I'm, I'm absolutely here to connect. Um, I love hearing your stories. I love hearing your shares. I love hearing your insights. So I look forward to that. And until next time, goodbye.